செக் பண்ணும் Yeah, I'll discuss, I'll discuss the answer to homework question. Each and every question I'll discuss. Okay, Gaurav, you answer. If I receive gift of money, 40,000 from Mr. X and 40,000 from Mr. Y, so will it be taxable or not? 40,000 cash from X. So it will be fully taxable, okay. What if it is like this from Mr. X, I got money of 40,000 exam because both are below 50,000, okay. Okay, you answer last bench, last. If I purchase a land, okay, you can answer in Hindi, that's okay. If I purchase a land at rupees 10 lakhs, stamp duty value is 12 lakhs. So, how will you decide? Yes. Explain with this only. First, what I will do? Correct. Actual is 10 lakhs. So, 2 lakhs is the benefit. Correct. Now, yeah, this you have to compare with 50,000 or 1 lakh and then between 1 lakh and 50,000 whichever is so this is higher yes because the benefit is greater than 1 lakh and greater than means it will be taxable ok ok you give answer list of exempt incomes all exempt incomes all section 10s yeah Ten seventeen is what? MPMLA. Daily allowance received by MPMLA. Daily allowance received by MPMLA. Then ten seventeen word. What was the keyword? D W Ramu Fakir G. So in that list of items which usually fall under income from other source, this point was not there. But then what did I teach you? If you find any new income which is not covered in the keyword of D.W. Ramu Fakir Ji. So, you have to understand it is taxable because if it is something exam, I would have taught you. So, this is some new thing which you found, but you should not be surprised. This way, one or two use unusual income, you will find in the question, but it will be taxable. By the way, what is this fees for attending board meetings? See, in companies, you know, when directors attend the board meeting, they are given fees for attending the board meeting. Even that is income from other source taxable. Then agriculture income in Pakistan. Because it is in Pakistan, it will be taxable. It is exam only if it is in India. So even this will go in outer column. Okay. Dividend, sorry, income from units of UTI. Even this is taxable directly outer column. Then dividend from foreign company taxable directly outer column. Then see, as a member of parliament, he received salary of 8,000 and daily allowance of 20,000. See, this you make it in a, uh, you have to present like this, see, I will show you, wait. You can present like this, income of MPMLA, okay, then you can write it in two parts, salary will be written fully in the outer column as taxable and daily allowance will be exam, okay. Or you can write like this, receipts as MP, receipts as MP, means as MP you received something, okay. And then you have to make two arrows like this, one will be salary, other will be daily allowance, okay. So, you can write like this, receipts as a member of parliament, then salary will be 8000 into 12, 96000 outer column and daily allowance will be dash in bracket exam under section. 1017. This way you have to write, okay? Outer column dash. Then, amount received on maturity of life insurance policy. This is fully exam under section 1010D. So, outer column dash. In bracket exam under section 1010D. Okay? 
then income of his minor children now see minor children income it is exam up to 1500 per child so see here there are two children one has got income of 7000 so this will be exam up to 1500 so balance 5500 will go to the outer column and second son's income is only 500 and up to 1500 is exam and what do you mean by up to 1500 anything below that will be exam so this is below 1500 only so it's fully exam you can directly put dash in the outer column or if you want to show it in the inner column then write in the inner column 500 then exam 500 directly outer column you can put dash also okay and see when we say exam up to 1500 up to means what anything below 1500 will be tax free okay so see the presentation should be like this income of first minor son inner column 7000 see your answer should look, look like this income of first minor son inner column 7000 less exam under section 1032 1500 and outer column 5500 then income of second minor son directly outer column dash in bracket exam under section 1032 up to 1500 in bracket you can show it's up to 1500 what did i say exam under section 1030 wait i forgot to start the recording don't mind i will rediscuss this some because students who are absent they depend upon the recording good i realized early Okay, let's discuss the answer to the homework question. Question number one: What was given? Mr. Saxena furnishes following details. Okay, in that, see, first point was winnings from horse race fully taxable. This you will write directly in the outer column, twenty-five thousand. Then rent from letting out the building along with plant and machinery furniture. And whenever you find building plus other assets combined, it becomes a composite rent. So it will be fully taxable. So nine thousand is per month. So multiply by twelve, one lakh eight thousand directly in the outer column. If there would have been some expenses, I would have deducted also deduction under section fifty seven. But there were no expenses, so directly in the outer column one lakh eight thousand. Okay. Then dividend from PQR Limited. Any dividend is fully taxable. Outer column twenty thousand. Then award from Lions Club. This is Lions Club. This is not government. If you get award from government, it will be exam. But this is non-government entity, so it will be fully taxable. So even this will go to the outer column. Then fees for attending board meetings. This thing was not covered in the keyword of D W Ramu Fakir Ji. But then what did I say? Anything you find new in the question which was not discussed by me, you can take it as taxable. So this will be taxable directly in the outer column. Then agriculture income in Pakistan because it is in Pakistan it will be taxable outer column full amount. If it is in India then it is exam. If problem would have been silent about India Pakistan we can assume it is India. But here they have clearly said it is from Pakistan so it will be taxable. Then income from units of UTI even this is taxable. Dividend from foreign company even this is taxable. All taxable amount you have to write directly in the outer column. Then as a member of parliament. He received salary of eight thousand and daily allowance of twenty thousand. You know how to present this thing? You can write like this: receipts as a member of parliament, and then below you have to draw two arrows like this. First, you have to write salary, and then whatever is the amount in the outer column, and then you will write daily allowance, but that will be dash because it is exam under section ten seventeen. And in our question, salary is how much? Eight thousand per month, so multiply by twelve, ninety-six thousand. That will go to outer column, and daily allowance will be dash. Exam under section ten seventeen. Then next point was in amount received on maturity or life insurance policy. This is fully exam under section ten ten D. Okay. See in sums there is nothing new. You have to just remember the theory properly. If you know the theory properly in tax, sums are very simple in tax. So this is exam under section ten ten D. This will be dash in the outer column, okay? And then last point was income of his minor children. First son seven thousand, second son five hundred. It is better you make presentation of each child separately because at one thousand five hundred is per child. So we'll show the presentation per child. So see, you should be showing like this. First you will write income of first minor son in the inner column. 
7000. Less exam under section 1032, 1500. Outer column 5500. Okay. And then second son's income is only 500. And what losses up to 1500 is exam. Up to means anything below 1500 will be tax free. So this is below. So this will be exam. So you can present like this income of second minor son. Outer column dash. In bracket you can write exam up to 1500 under section 1032. So this was a normal sum. And what is the total of the statement then? 3,82,500. This is the final answer of this question. Taxable income from other sources. Okay, then question number 2 we have already done. Next is, next is question number 3. Okay. Now see question number 3. First point was what? As a member of parliament he received salary and then daily allowance. So how to present this? You will write receipts as a member of parliament. Then one arrow you will write salary and that is 10,000 into 12 outer column 120,000 and daily allowance will be dash in bracket exam under section 1017. Then rent from building. What do you mean by letting out? Letting means to give on rent. Okay. But what have we given on rent? Building plus plant and machinery furniture. So it becomes a composite rent. But along with that they have given repairs, maintenance, depreciation, expenditure. And whenever there is expenditure. Deduction under section 57. So, first in the inner column, 20,000 into 12, that comes to 2,40,000. And then after that, what do you return? Less deduction under section 57. And then one by one, you have to write all the expense. So, here first was repairs, 25,000 less. Then maintenance and depreciation, 40,000 less. And balance in the outer column? 1,75,000 that will come to the outer call 1,75,000 okay then agriculture income in India because it is in India it will be exam but then what to do with expense ignore see what did I explain last lecture taxable income deduct the expense exempt income ignore the expense winnings also ignore the expense dividend and mutual fund income deduct only one expense family pension standard deduction these five, five points you should remember thoroughly. These are five points of section 57. So, this expenses you will ignore. And agriculture income you will write in the particulars column but in the amount column dash. And in bracket exam under section 10-1. 10-1, okay. Then, see in next three points what I am doing. You can also do like this. Interest, 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 circle interest. Because see, whenever interest income comes, our line of thinking is same. What is our line of thinking? We have to search this in GPS. If it falls in GPS, it will be exam. And if it doesn't fall in GPS, it will be taxable. So check one by one. Interest on bonds of ZTEC Limited. Is it from GPS? No, so it will be taxable. Then interest on debentures. Is it from GPS? No, it will be taxable. Taxable means you have to write the amount in the outer column. Then interest on PPF. Yes, this is from GPS. Exam under section 1011. And because it is exam outer column dash. I hope you have done all this properly. Yes. Okay. Then family pension after the death of his wife. Okay. So family pension... Is this army employees family pension or normal? Normal. So here you have to remember that standard deduction. Because if as soon as you see family pension, you have to take standard deduction. But the presentation will be, first you will write family pension in the inner column. Okay. See this sum is actually solved in my iPad. So I can show here. Family pension. So, first you will write 60,000 in the inner column. Okay. This is the same sum. Okay. And then less deduction under section 57. Have you written this deduction under section 57? Check the presentation also. Then one third of 60,000. That comes to 20. And another amount is fixed 15,000. Out of the two, whichever is lower. And the one which is lower, you have to put it in box. 
because you have to explain the paper checker the one which is lower you have to show what amount you have selected because here there are two amounts 20000 15000 which one you have selected so you have to put it in box the amount which you have selected and what does this arrow represent which are is lower so this is the way you should have presented so 15000 you deduct and outer column 45000 see my style is what you know most of the sums as i ask you to try first then i discuss in detail in the class okay otherwise see if i directly solve the question in the class you will never learn it is always advisable that first you solve on your own and the discussion will be done at length in the class but first you have to solve on your own so that you come to know how much you know and how much you don't know then what was the last point in the question dividend from so not last next point dividend from foreign company now dividend income is taxable but what about collection charges ignore. see ignore. yes ignore very good because in case of dividend and mutual fund income you can deduct only one expense that is interest on loan to invest in shares do you have interest on loan here no so all other expenses you have to ignore it so this 9500 will go directly in the outer column okay then royalty income is taxable and the connected expense you will minus and whenever you minus expense your language should be deduction under section 57 be careful about that i have seen students what they write you know less exempt see when you are deducting expense you cannot write the word exempt exempt word is for what if there is some income and if government say okay don't pay tax then exempt but whenever it is an expenditure you have to use the word deduction okay so deduction under section 57 5000 you will minus outer column 28000 then amount received from life insurance policy this is fully exempt 10 10 the outer column dash winnings from lottery taxable but what about expenditure yes in winnings you ignore the expense because winnings doesn't come from hard work it comes from luck okay and see whenever you ignore any expense it's better you write a note that expenditure related to winnings and collection charges related to dividend will not be allowed as deduction or they are ignored because see if something you ignored it's better you write either you write in the statement only or if you want after the statement is over below you can write it as a note note for what the items which you ignored it and in this question you ignored collection charges related to dividend okay so you can write collection charges related to dividend income is ignored it is what should be the language c it is not allowed as deduction see if you remember first lecture i told you in income tax what should be your language if it is income we write taxable or exam and for expense we write allowed or not allowed so see it is an expense so see my language it is not allowed as deduction and even for winnings you can write expenditure of purchase lottery tickets is not allowed as deduction then so this was question number 3 then read question 4 oh, wait 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 sorry good you reminded me uh, what is the total of question number 3 4 lakhs 52,500 450 to 500 this is the final answer okay then question number 4 Mr. Nasir the financial control of Glaxo limited blah 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 whatever it is then see first point Nasir is a member of Bandra club during the year his winnings from card games amounted to 3000 so any winnings taxable whether it is from card games horse race lottery taxable sometimes corn bane karodpati any winnings taxable then directors meeting fees this is directors get the meeting fees for attending the board meetings so even this is taxable okay then 
bank interest see whenever you come across interest you have to check in gps see do one thing what i have done you can also do like this you you should do like this because see right now the chapter is fresh but after 2 3 months when you see you will realize oh why did i circle interest because for all interest income the rule is standard if it is in gps exam if it is not in gps it is taxable so bank interest doesn't fall in gps so it will be taxable outro column this one is post of a savings bank account yes this is from gps but it is exam up to 3500 so this you will have to first write it in the inner column interest on posba 7500 less exam under section 1015 you know that gold bonds posba ppf sukanya gold bonds posba ppf sukanya so for gold bonds and posba it is 1015 So ten fifteen and you will minus three thousand five hundred outer column four thousand. Then this is cooperative society deposit interest. This is not in GPS, so taxable directly outer column six hundred. So what was the total of this? Eight thousand nine hundred. Eighty. Eight thousand nine hundred. Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Okay, eight thousand nine. Okay. then next question mr govinda is a member of parliament okay fine first point directly as a member of parliament he received salary so how will you write first receipts as a member of parliament then one arrow you will write salary and how much it is 3000 per month so multiply by 12 36 on directly in the outer column fully taxable then daily allowance you will put dash in bracket exam under section 10 17 10 17 then he received dividend of 500 com from cooperative society and 5000 from abc limited both are taxable so you can pass two different entries for this one you can write dividend from cooperative society 500 then dividend from abc limited 5000 both will go directly in the outer column as both are taxable okay then he has won 9000 in crossword puzzle so winnings from crossword is fully taxable outer column 9000 then he has let let me swat to give it on rent now what has he given on rent he has let machinery and furniture and also building see whenever building plus other assets are combined it becomes a composite rent and it is given on rent to mr wagle at a monthly rent of 6000 did you know that it is monthly rent so it is monthly means you have to multiply by 12 be careful huh? so into 12 that comes to 72000 after that expenditure on repairs was given and depreciation was given and for expenditure you have to write deduction under section 57 first you will write repairs 4500 then depreciation 18000 this you will minus okay so in the outer column how much you get 49500 composite rent outer column 49500 check the answers properly you should have a proper correct notebook with you with right answers so what is the final answer 1 lakh 1 lakh exactly okay yes tell me not getting 1 lakh check some calculation mistake might be there give me the right answer no? these videos are watched by so many people they should not get the wrong answer is 1 lakh correct yes okay, so 1 lakh is the final answer for question number 5 okay then question number 6 directly see first point do one thing just the way i am doing you can also do interest 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 and whenever interest income you have to search in gps C one by one. First is interest on company deposit. This is not in GPS, so fully taxable. Outer column one thousand family pension, normal family pension. So you will have to take standard deduction. So first in the inner column you will write two thousand five hundred into twelve. That is how much? Thirty thousand. This will come in the inner column, and then less deduction under section fifty seven. In that you have to show two amounts. 
वन अपॉन थ्री इंटू थर्टी थाउजेंड दैट इज टेन थाउजेंड एंड द सेकेंड अमाउंट इज फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड आउट ऑफ द टू विच एर इज लोअर सो वॉट इज लोअर टेन थाउजेंड सो दैट टेन थाउजेंड यू विल माइनस इन द इनर कॉलम ओनली सो थर्टी थाउजेंड माइनस टेन थाउजेंड आउटर कॉलम ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड गेटिंग एवरी वन प्रॉपरली देन इंटरेस्ट ऑन डिवेंचर्स दिस इंटरेस्ट इज नॉट इन जीपीएस सो इट विल बी फुल्ली टैक्सेबल आउटर कॉलम टू थाउजेंड देन इनकम फ्रॉम यूनिट्स ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड म्यूचुअल फंड इनकम इज ऑल्सो टैक्सेबल डिरेक्टली आउटर कॉलम वन थाउजेंड सी फॉर ओनली थिंग वंस यू रिमेंबर द एग्जाम आइटम्स देन द चैप्टर इज वेरी सिंपल बिकॉज एनी थिंग अदर देन एग्जाम विल बी टैक्सेबल सो यू हेव टू जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस लिस्ट ऑफ एग्जाम इनकम्स ओके देन परचेज ऑफ अ शॉप फॉर सिक्सटी फाइव लैक्स स्टैम्प ड्यूटी वैल्यू सेवेंटी लैक्स यू नो दिस इज अ पॉइंट ऑफ गिफ्ट वेन एवर यू परचेज समथिंग एट अ लोअर प्राइस इट बिकम्स अ गिफ्ट एंड हाउ डिड आई रियलाइज इट इज अ परचेज एट लो प्राइस because 70 lakhs is what stamp duty value which is as good as the fair market value and imagine a shop has a market value of 70 lakhs i have paid only 65 lakhs so i purchased a shop at a low price so whenever purchase of immovable property at low price you have to use that formula 10% of actual price or 50 down whichever is higher if up to that much the difference is there then it is exam so see it is better i will put it in our system our system is like this look here what is the amount first you have to see the stamp duty value what was the stamp duty value 70 lakhs. 70 lakhs okay and what is the actual price 65 lakhs, 65 lakhs. so first you have to see the difference this maza means what the benefit and the benefit is fund. okay so in the outer column you will put dash and in the particular column you have to show this working ha huh? see last time also when we had solved one sum we had shown this kind of working so in the particular column you will write hdv 75 lakhs sorry it was 70 lakhs and then actual price 65 lakhs first what will you write the main heading purchase of a shop at low price remember last lecture i told you if you get something for free you write gift of blah 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 If you buy something at low price, write purchase at low price. So here you should write purchase or shop at low price, and then in the particular column only this working you have to show. Yes. So you have to write that exam in the section fifty six two ten. See, a doubt, student has a doubt. Do we have to write that section fifty six two ten? It is better you write. But in case you don't write, it is not that risky that your marks will be cut only. Okay. Yes, wherever section tens are there, it is a very basic thing expected from a student. Anything covered in ten, okay, that you should not fail to miss. But it's better if you are remembered on a, in exam day fifty six to ten. It's better you write because the whole chart of gift. It is as per fifty six two ten. See fifty six two ten doesn't say it's exempt taxable. Whether something becomes exempt or taxable, it is as per fifty six two ten. Up to fifty down exam, above fifty down taxable. Both are written in section fifty six two ten. So whenever it is about gift, you can write a general section fifty six two ten. So this was outer column dash. Okay. Then. That's it. So this was dash in outer column. So what is the total of this? Twenty-five thousand two fifty. Taxable income from other sources. Okay. Then question seven. Question seven. Directly see the first point. Income from units of UTI taxable. Outer column two thousand. Okay. Then interest on debentures. Taxable nine thousand five hundred outer column. Then interest on deposit. Wait, wait. I forgot to do this. Our protocol is circle interest. Whenever you come across interest, because the interest can have thousands of variety. But our theory doesn't have much variety. It is standard GPS exam. Rest all are taxable. 
But in question, they can give anything out of the creativity. So, first interest, this is not in GPS, so it will be taxable. The another interest is on deposit with bank. Even this is not in DP, GPS, so it will be taxable. Even this Hindustan liver is not in GPS, it will be taxable. All are directly in the outer column. Then 10,000 from LIC on maturity policy, exam under section 1010D, directly in the outer column dash. Then interest on deposit certificate under gold monetization scheme. This is nothing but gold bonds. And interest on gold bonds exam under section 10, 15. So outer column you will put dash. But in bracket you have to mention exam under section 10, 15. 10, 15 okay. Then gift of 30,000 30, each from X and Y. Means X also gave me 30,000. Y also gave me 30,000. And see what is the rule of aggregation? All money, 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 money aggregate. All movable property, no price, no price, no price aggregate. And all movable property, low price aggregate. Three aggregation you have to keep separate. Money, movable property, no price. Movable property, low price. Yes, immovable property, we don't do aggregation. It is per property. Okay. So, here it is pure money. And all monies you have to aggregate and see. So, if you aggregate 30,000 plus 30,000, it is each. So, 130,000 I got from X, other from Y. So, 30 plus 30 is 60,000, which is above 50,000, fully taxable. Fully taxable. So, you can write gift of money from X and Y, bracket 30,000 plus 30,000, outer column 60,000. So, what is the total of this? 76,700. Then question number 8. See in this question if you notice they have given the expenses below. Did you notice this? So read one by one. First is Dividend on shares of Unilever Incorporation, a foreign company. Then connected with dividend, there is a point below. Did you see this? Interest on loan to invest in shares of Unilever. Did you feel it's connected? Yes. Unilever, Unilever. The point which is given above is your dividend income. And below they are given the expenditure. How do I know it is an expenditure? See, loan was taken to invest. And when you take a loan to invest, you take a loan means you have borrowed. So, obviously you have to pay interest. So, this is my expenditure. Anyways, they have written also, she claimed following expenses. Okay. But then what is the rule? Interest you can deduct, but there is a limit. Maximum 20% of dividend income. So, our dividend income is 10,000. So, what is 20% of 2,000? 2000 you can minus at the most. Now you have to see the actual amount. 3000 it is less or more. More. So you have to stay in the limit. So you can deduct only 2000. 3000 will not be allowed. It will be restricted to 2000. What if this figure of 3000 would have been say 1200 only. Then you can deduct 1200. Up till 2000 you can deduct. 2000 in this question, huh? because 20% comes to 2000. So, up till 2000 means if this is 1200, then you can minus as it is 1200. But here it is in excess of the limit. So, you have to cancel this and restrict to the amount of 2000. So, see how to present, you know, in the first you will write like this dividend from Unilever, inner column 10,000. Then you will write deduction. Under section 57, in that you will write interest on loan. Okay. And in bracket, what you will write, you know, 3000 restricted to 20% of dividend income. In the bracket of interest on loan, what will you write? See, first you will write interest on loan. Okay. Can you see this thing? 
and below interest on loan you will write in the bracket see like this you will write interest on loan in bracket you will write 3000 comma restricted to 20% of dividend income or you can write 10,000 anything is fine see we are trying to show that it was 3000 but it is restricted restrict means to put it in the limit it is restricted to 20 percent of 10,000 and then in the inner column you will minus 2000 so first you wrote 10,000 dividend then minus 2000 10 minus 2 outer column 8000 getting everyone correctly outer column 8000 then first point we did dividend next is winnings from horse race for winnings also no there is no expense for winnings of horse race okay anyways even if expenses would have been given we would have ignored but for horse race winnings there is no expense it will be taxable but yes for lottery winnings there are expenditure on lottery tickets but winnings expenditure you have to ignore okay and when you ignore something it is better you write a note what can you write expenditure in buying lottery tickets is not allowed as deduction this you can write in the statement also or below the statement also i repeat what did i say expense on buying lottery tickets is not allowed as deduction So, lottery winnings 75,000, it will go entirely to the outer column, fully taxable. Then, interest, circle interest. But in this question, there is only one interest. But whatever it is, is it from GPS? No, not in GPS, so fully taxable. See, whenever you come across interest, you have to remember GPS only. Gold bonds, POSBA, PPF, Sukanya. So, if it is not from that, so it will be taxable. So, outer column 18,000, correct? Then, dividend from cooperative society taxable, outer column 1,000. That's it. So, what is the total of the statement? 1,12,000. This is taxable income from other sources. Then, question number 9. See this question I have covered, tried to cover maximum points because on, see on exam day if you don't get much time, you can see this question and question number 11 also was good. The one which we solved yesterday, in sorry last lecture, this gift, question on gift. See right now only you can mark in exam, if you have less time you can simply do question 11, this question 9 which I am discussing now. And there is one more question 10. Three questions you do, it's enough. See, right now for the sake of practice, I have given more questions so that by solving you get, uh, uh, try to memorize all the provisions repeatedly. But on exam day, you can solve only 9, 10 and 11, that's it. 10 is yet to be done, this I have not even given in the homework also. 8 and 9 homework I had given yesterday by message in the group. So, question number 9. See, in question 9, first point is interest. Whenever you come across interest, make it a rule to circle it. And as soon as you circle it, it will remind you of GPS. Is it there in GPS? No. no. So, this is fully taxable. Directly outer column, correct? Then dividend from cooperative society taxable. Then he has let out. Let out means to give on rent. What have we given on rent? Machinery, furniture. Is it building plus other assets or only other assets? So here you cannot write composite rent. Composite rent you have to write when? Building plus other assets. Because if building has a separate head income from house property, 
because it is structure of four wall and a roof. So if that is there, then we can say it's a composite rent, composite rent. But here it is not building. Here it is machinery, furniture. So even if there are thousands of assets, none of them is building, right? So it is rent of other assets. If you remember in our D W Ramu, the first rent, rent of other assets. Anyways, by mistake, if you have written composite also, they will not deduct marks for this. Mainly you have to show taxable or exam. It's taxable. All rent incomes are taxable. So what is the amount? Monthly rent. Did you notice here it is monthly? Monthly means you will have to multiply by 12. So 2000 into 12, how much? 24,000. Okay. And then expenses are given. So you will write less deduction under section 57. In that first you will draw an arrow and write repairs 6500. Okay. Then depreciation 18,000. Okay. So both the expense you have to show separately. Repairs, depreciation minus 6500 minus 18,000. So what comes in the outer column? Yes. Here you are getting a negative amount in the outer column. See. In this question, in the inner column, the rent was 24,000 and when you deduct expenditure of repairs and then 18,000 depreciation, you are getting a negative figure and negative figure means what you know, it is a loss. See, a person who is engaged in generating income, sometimes he makes loss. Like I am also busy in what generating income by teaching, but it's not necessary that I will generate income. I can suffer loss also. How? If I get less admissions, if I get less fees and my expenses are more, so I can suffer loss. And in income tax, what is the rule you know? If there is income, you have to pay the tax. But if there is loss, you can adjust with your other income. If there is loss, you can adjust with the other income. Other income means we have got so many income, see? Interest on Maharashtra government security dividend, so many incomes are there, it will get adjusted. You have to simply keep it as a negative amount in the outer column and when you total up the outer column, automatically that negative amount will be deducted. This means the loss is set off. What was the language? The loss. The lo see, this is the word. Loss is set off. See, the word set off is so common in income tax. After some time, you will also get used to. To set off means what? To adjust a loss against the income. So here it is happening, this only. See here, why I am saying loss? Obviously, 24,000 was the rent. See, if I get less income and I have to spend more, so if against my income, the expenses are more, so I am making a loss. But the loss of 600 can be, use proper language, can be set, set off. off against other income. See, you should know how to write in the exam. The loss of 600 can be, sorry, it was 500. Sorry, by mistake I said, loss of 500 can be set off against other income. Okay. And this setting off is allowed. You know, later on we'll study a separate topic on set off of losses. There are rules for setting off the loss. See, right now I have not said any rule. I just said, yes, whenever there is a loss, you can adjust with the income and you can offset. Okay, but there also there are some rules and regulations for that there is a separate topic. If you see the index, if you see the index of our book, look. See the index of our book. There is a separate topic on this. Set off and carry forward or losses. This we are going to do later, okay. But this is a famous topic in income tax, set off and carry forward or loss. But right now you don't require that in-depth knowledge of that chapter. Just by common sense you can do that 500 loss is there. Let me adjust with other income. So that is a common sense and that is what law allows. Okay. Then. Next is. Rent from letting out a building at Andheri. Along with plant and machinery. See, now it is building plus plant and machinery. It is composite. And they have also written the word composite. So it's okay. Even if they would not have written, we know it is a composite rent. So 4000 is per month. So multiply by 12. That comes to 48000. Okay. 
and then for expenditure what will you write less deduction under section 57 and what is the name of the expenditure expenditure so just write expenditure an amount 39500 minus out of all you will get 8500 okay then he is an author of a textbook which fetched him see fetch means which made him earn to fetch means to earn okay which fetched him a gross royalty of 45000 see by gross royalty they are trying to say there are expenses also don't forget and that expenses they have given separately here below okay so royalty of 45000 is gross and it is taxable and for taxable income there are expenses you can deduct it so see what expenses are given salary to a clerk who collects from him necessary data and goes through the final proof reading what do you mean by proof reading to check whether there is some printing mistake or not see for example i have made my book i can give you to give to us some give it to my student and say just check and let me know if there is some printing mistake or not so when when you have to read totally you this call proof reading means you have to literally read and check is there any printing mistake so that is done by usually authors because the authors books are published across india so they don't want in the book there should be printing mistake see in the class when we teach students in our books you find some printing mistake but it is a closed group so we can rectify the mistake but when an author is publishing the book across india he has to take care that there should be no printing and spelling mistake in the book so for that he has kept a clerk and to him he has given salary but whatever it is an expenditure related to writing books yeah. so it is a connected expenditure and whenever any connected expenditure you can minus okay anyways you have done the same thing only you have deducted i am just explaining what is the final proof reading proof reading means check just read the whole book and find out any printing mistake is there or not then purchased stationery worth for 1400 in connection of revision of the book even this is an expenditure related to royalty income this also you will minus then telephone expense attributed attributed means related attributed means related connected connected related to publication and sale of his book okay means they are trying to say all are related expense none of them is a nonsense expense all are related and it is good if we want related expense only if there is some nonsense expense which has got no connection with my royalty then you cannot minus anyway they don't give any useless expense also most of the time they give all related and connected expense only so 45 on inner column then you will write less deduction under section 57 and there you can write the name of the expenditure in short see how i am writing in short salary to clerk that's it stationery telephone expense that's it if you want you can write in detail see our purpose just to name the expense that's it salary to clerk stationery telephone expense so minus three items what comes in outer column 40400 outer column 40400 okay then family pension this is army family pension normal one normal, normal. so standard deduction first you will write in the inner column 30000 Less deduction under section fifty-seven. One upon three into thirty thousand. That is ten thousand. Compare with fifteen thousand, which is lower. So ten thousand minus ten. Outer column twenty thousand. Life insurance exam under section ten ten D. Outer column dash. Agriculture income in Gujarat. Gujarat is in India. Exam under section ten one. Outer column dash in bracket. Exam under ten one. Then agriculture income from Malaysia. taxable malaysia is foreign country so taxable then circle interest 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 for all the interest income there is a standard rule you have to search in posba sorry gps <laughs> you have to search in gps if it is gps it will be exam so first one is posba it is in gps so exam but how much 3500 Three thousand five hundred will minus so outer column. Okay, you will write exam under section ten fifteen. Three thousand five hundred outer column you will get five thousand. Canara Bank savings account. It is not in GPS, so taxable. 
PPF is there in GPS. Exam under CN 1011 dash. And this is not in GPS or taxable. Outer column 1800. So that's it. We have discussed all the homework questions. Okay. Yes. Okay. Total. Yeah. What is the total of this? 161. 300. See in this totaling. Did you deduct it? Did you deduct the loss? Yes. There was a loss of 500 in one rent income. Hmm. So that you have to minus in the totaling. Okay. Means all amounts you added but that 500 was deducted. So answer comes to 161,300. Correct? Hmm. Taxable income from other sources. Then. Now see. Now few points are remaining in this chapter. Wait. Look here. Ready? See. See, last lecture I had explained that if you get movable property as gift, then we have to see the fair market value of that. If the fair market value of the gifted item is up to 50,000 exam, above 50,000 taxable. But what do you mean by movable property? So, there are only certain items which are treated as movable property. Means law has given definition of movable property. See what is that you know. There is a keyword. Just we. Okay. In that J stands for jewellery. See only if you receive these items. Then only taxable. Just we is a list of items which I will say right now. But whatever it is. Only items covered in just we. Will be taxable as gift. That means if you get gift of some other item, other than just we, no tax. Reason I will tell you, but first let me complete the full form of just we. Okay. So in just we, J stands for jewelry. Now see when I say jewelry, it means gold, silver, sometimes they write bullion. Have you heard about the word bullion? Yes. Bullion means it is raw gold. See whenever gold and silver is in raw form. It is in the form of a brick. It is in the form of a biscuit. So it is called bullion. So bullion is nothing but gold and silver but in raw form. But that same gold and silver if you do some processing. If you make ornaments they may call it as jewellery. Okay. So jewellery includes gold, silver, bullion, diamonds, everything. Okay. So what was the full form? J for sorry in Jasvi J stands for jewellery. A stands for artistic work. And archaeological collections. Artistic work means any artistic work like drawings, paintings, sculptures or any artistic work. Art. And actually there are two A's. Artistic work and archaeological collections. Have you heard about this archaeological collection? See the spelling. Archaeological collection means antiques. Antiques, antiques. What do you mean by antique pieces? Antique means these are items of ancient time, very old days. You know, these things are usually found under the ground. There are some people who are into archaeology. What they do? They keep searching the ground and sometimes they dig the ground. Under the ground, they find some very old thing which was available, say, 200 years ago. 1000 years ago. So, if any item which is 1000, 200, 500 years old, we call it as antique piece. And these are usually found under the ground or under the water also. Okay. Because these are such an old thing. It is not available on the land. They are all buried in the land. So, they are called archaeological collections. Okay. And these things, you know, have got lot of value. In exhibition, many times you see there are some antique pieces. People pay crores for that. Because that item is not available in today's market. These are such old and ancient items that on in exhibition if you put people are ready to pay crores. We will not pay. But there are some people who are fan of such antique pieces. Okay, They are called archaeological collections. So what comes in movable property read? Just we in that J stands for jewellery. 
A for artistic work and other is archaeological collection. Then shares and securities. Shares and securities. V stands for virtual digital asset. Yes, virtual digital asset means nowadays, have you heard about bitcoins, cryptocurrency? See, bitcoins and cryptocurrency, they are not physical assets like this. They are generated through codes in the computer. Means in the computer, there is some activity called mining. There is some activity in IT language, we call it as mining. And by doing some mining and doing some calculation, they generate a code. And that is a computerized code. But even that is a value, people sell it and buy it. We call it as cryptocurrency. Okay. Crypto means it is encrypted. Encrypted means no one can break the code. For example, see my mobile you are not able to open. Why? Because there is a password. So it is one way encrypted. So with the word encrypted, the word comes crypto. So cryptocurrency means it is a currency. But it is not freely anyone can take it. It is coded. Anyway, it is a hi-fi concept. But in short, this cryptocurrencies and bitcoins, they are called virtual digital asset. Even that is a market nowadays. You know, now, nowadays, all small, small young people also, they have got app in the mobile. They keep purchasing and selling cryptocurrencies on mobile app. And they make money in that. So, what are the items covered in Jasvi? Jewelry, artistic work. There are two A's. One is artistic work. Other is archaeological collections. Then as for shares and securities. Virtual digital asset. Only these items you get as gift. Then only tax will arise. That means if you get something other than just we. Like for example, someone gave me a washing machine as a gift. Someone gave me microwave oven as a gift. Someone gave me mobile phone as a gift. I don't have to pay the tax. Because these are usually gift items. See, basically, law fees, it is a genuine gift. Government doesn't want to tax it. See, Jasvi is not gift items. These are investment items. Investment items, people preserve as their property. If this is given as gift, it's not believable. Yes, some people give microwave oven, fridge, washing machine as gift. That can become a gift item also. Because these are not investment items. Fridge, washing machine, do you purchase? But you know, movable property, why government is not taxing easily? Because movable items are the things which normally you give as gift. Tell me, if I have to give gift to someone, money will be the last thing I will think of. Genuinely, I want to give someone. For example, my friend is getting married. Or it is his birthday. I changed my example because marriage gift is anyways exam. Marriage gift, marriage was a wrong example. Let's assume my friend has a birthday. And if I genuinely want to give, give the gift, money will be the last option. First, I will try to find what will my friend like. Then I will think, yes, my friend doesn't have a washing machine at his home. Let me gift a washing machine. Okay. So these items are giftable items. If you gift these items, tax doesn't come. But if someone gives gold, then that comes in anyone's eye. Oh, gold. You gave Reliance shares as gift. These are not gifting item. Okay. Then government says, okay, very good. You gave a nice gift. And the one who has received gift, he has to pay the tax now. So in short, and even immovable property is not a gifting item. Tell me if your friend's birthday is there, will you think of giving him one house as gift? See, Jasvi and immovable property, these are investment items. See, there is a difference between investment things and gifting things. If it is a gifting thing, gift it, no tax. But these are investment things. See, immovable properties are always investment items. In immovable property, what comes? Houses and land. Houses and land, they are always investment items. So, this will always come in tax. But movable property is a big world. There are so many things. Even this is movable. Even this is movable. Even my iPad is movable. So many things are movable. But in movable things, only just we items are actually investment items. Okay. And you will also agree in movable things, when you think of investing, what do you think of investing on? Jewelry. 
shares these are the investing items and nowadays some people investing in cryptocurrencies so only investing items given as gift it will be taxable and all other items other than just we law says they are not investing items they are just gifting items if that is given as gift government will not tax and if someone feels bad why government is not taxing see firstly government doesn't have a right to tax on gift also that i explained last lecture so whatever government is getting government is happy with it technically speaking government should not tax gift why it is not an income income tax is a tax on income and gift is not an income why because it is something you got free income means what something for free or give and take give and take when you give something and in return you get something then you can say i have earned it mm. then only it should be taxed so gift is actually not a thing to be taxed but then i told you last lecture people used to do cheating mm. so government started tax but then government is not that greedy that everything they are taxing in movable property they have restricted to only just we okay so see money is always taxable movable only just we items taxable immovable property everything is taxable okay Yes, you had some doubt. Yeah. Yes. See, car is not an investment item. See, his doubt is what you know that uh, right now what statement I said all the items which are investing items, investment items. If that is received as gift, it will be taxed. So, in the list of investment items, I said just we. so someone had a doubt sir what about car see car is not an invested item car is utility car depreciates its value doesn't grow see investing item is what when you think of investing what is your purpose that let me invest 1 crore it will become 2 crore soon my money will double they are investing item see you buy car although cars are also costly you get a car for 1 crore also but that is your lifestyle it is just for utility status symbol but it is not an investment item investment items are such where you have the expectation that the value will grow but cars value will never grow okay anything you imagine other than just we you will not find any growth in that even if you buy a mobile mobile is investing item see casually you might say iphone is a big thing it is an investment for me see casually saying investment is different actually in so see this full form i have written here look just we j stands for jewelry see in jewelry also what what things are included gold silver even bullion many times in the exam they have written bullion and students think this is not covered in our list sir what it is not covered jewelry is a broad term it includes gold silver ornaments diamonds bullion see bullion is nothing but gold and silver only but in a raw form in the form of brick etc then artistic work artistic work will also include drawings paintings sculptures then archaeological collections shares and securities virtual digital assets okay then see one more thing look see if movable property or immovable property is held as stock in trade then it is not taxed even if you get at no price or low price generally just we immovable property if you get for no price low price the tax arises but if it is held as stock in trade then it is not taxable what do you mean by stock in trade the sec is trading in stock in trade means it is an item in which i am dealing it is my business to sell that item for example see jewelry if you receive as a gift normally it is taxable if the market value of that is above 50 down it will be taxable but imagine i have a jewelry shop only it is my business to buy and sell jewelry then for me jewelry becomes stock in trade trade means to buy and sell stock means goods 
so for a business of jewelry a person having a jewelry shop jewelry is like stock in trade so answer this if you understood imagine i have a jewelry shop okay and i get some jewelry free of cost value is above 50000 also so what is the rule for that it will not be taxable why See, see because it is stock in trade don't say that was the rule that is a rule but why see in the whole gift concept one thing is common you know whenever law feels it's a genuine case government will not tax it like tell me i am dr lc why it is exam because they are genuine gifts so whenever the transaction is very genuine government will not tax right so see jewelry shopkeeper getting jewelry free of cost it is normal because they get free samples imagine i have a shop of jewelry so many times some necklace etc i get as a free sample see if you get some necklace free of cost people will be surprised wow what a gift but for a jewelry shopkeeper if he gets some necklace or some gold item or some earring or nose ring free so that means he should be getting it as a free samples see in a business there is a trend your suppliers give you free samples so that you like that product and you start selling it and you place order with the supplier so getting free of cost or even at low price it is very normal for a businessman tell me since i have a jewelry shop don't you think i might sell the jewelry for 1 1 lakh but the same thing i might be getting at 10000 also because it is a business because since i have a jewelry shop i have got good connection with my supplier they provide me gold silver at a lower price but here if government says oh you got at low price the difference is your benefit see this rule is for a normal person not for a businessman okay so see best way to think is if something is like a stock for me then getting it free or at a lower price is very normal and if something is normal and very genuine government will not tax it firstly government feels guilty to tax gift why because actually it is not an income but there are cheaters in india they used to claim incomes also as gift for that then they started the tax on gift but then somewhere government knows at the back of the mind that we feel guilty to tax so obviously they will have to free those transaction which are genuine so this is a genuine transaction and you will agree with this see for example tell me it is my business to buy and sell land so for me getting a land at a low price is very normal yes. see businessman acquires everything at a lower price only then he sells it to the customer at a higher price to make profit so in short but see it should be stock in trade for whom not for the one who gives for the receiver see the one who received it for example received jewelry so jewelry should be stock for me if i received land land should be stock for me if i received a house house should be stock for me and house is stock for a construction company or the one who is dealing in buying and selling flat so the one who has received for him it should be a stock item it should be goods item okay yes you had some doubt see income from business will arise when when this gifted item is sold further see whether you sell it or don't sell it it is not relevant when you are getting for free of cost at that moment only tax can come it will not come it's a different thing but the moment i got it for free government could have taxed me but thanks government has understood that it should not be taxed yes you can also say like this sir eventually that item you are going to sell and when you sell you will make profit it will become your income from business see that is a different thing irrespective of that if government would not have made this rule it would have been taxable law could have been very rude also by saying what you sell it you don't sell you throw it that's your problem you got for free 
you are a jewelry businessman you got jewelry free pay tax the law would have been senseless like this also yeah. but they are sensible they understood that for a jewelry businessman if he gets jewelry free it is like a free sample he is getting and if he gets at a lower price suppliers might be giving him at lower price because it is a business to sell jewelry see jewelry was just an example see whether it is jaswi or immovable property if these items are stock in trade then it will be exam no tax okay so see i have written this thing here if the received property is stock in trade see received property whether it is jaswi or immovable if that received property is stock in trade for the receiver then no tax okay okay answer i am a teacher i am not a jewelry businessman imagine i am a teacher i got gold from a jeweler i got gold from the jeweler so for a jeweler gold is stock but you have to think from giver's point of view the receiver 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 is me i am a teacher i am not jewelry businessman so if i get gold as gift i will have to pay tax if i say no no the one who gave me the gold is a jeweler for him it's a stock or for him it's a stock you are happy you are a teacher you got gold pay tax that's why you don't have to see the giver you have to see the receiver the one who received for him it should be stock in trade then only it will be exempt okay so see based on this there is one question see this one question number 10 you know why this question was not given as homework because this question has this point of stock in trade we'll be able to finish this sum right now prepare one statement of income from other sources we are solving question number 10 ready okay read mansoor a dealer in shares what do you mean by dealer in shares no but only just we items taxable other items not taxable see understand the chart properly i repeat see let me repeat all thing give from employer salary give from customer business other gifts first you have to check in i am dr lc any gift you have to first check out in i am dr lc see i am dr lc if it fits then just we and all that that knowledge is not relevant anything in i am dr lc exam but if it doesn't fit in i am dr lc then it becomes others then you have to see is it money then aggregate all money together and if it is not money then you have to see is it movable property in movable property if it is just we then it will be taxed not just we ignore it means not taxable okay and immovable property there is nothing like just we okay but this 
money, jaswi, etc. It is all in other gifts. But the point which we did right now, it falls in I am Dr. LC. And once I am Dr. LC, don't use the knowledge of jaswi, etc. No price, low price. Everything becomes irrelevant. See the things of no price, low price, jaswi. All this comes in others. Okay, other than I am Dr. LC. But our question, this point falls in relatives. And relatives means I am Dr. LC. So you don't have to think anything then. Exempt. If you are not in I am Dr. LC, what would you have to think, you know? Whether it is money, movable, immovable. If movable, it should be just you only. And then you check the amount also. Above 50, below 50. Everything you have to check. But all that headache starts when? When you are not in I am Dr. LC. Once you are in I am Dr. LC, there is no botheration. It is straight exempt. So see, if you, you can write here, brother-in-law means you can write a relatives. In the question only you can write relative. And in bracket you can write I am Dr. LC. In LC there are two C's. One is charitable, other is COVID. COVID treatment, COVID death. Okay. So this is, I am Dr. LC gift, so it will be exam. So you will put amount or dash? Dash. So what will you write? Gift of bullion from brother-in-law. This way you can write, correct? Gift of bullion from brother-in-law. Okay, you can also write gift of bullion from brother-in-law in bracket relative. Gift of bullion from brother-in-law in bracket relative. Dash. If you want, you can write. If you want to write this section, what section you can write? 56 to 10. Done. Then, next point, on 23rd June 23, this falls in our previous year, heard my language of saying, this falls in our previous year, our previous year means what is our previous year? 23-24. So it falls in 23-24 only. Okay. And obviously they will give all the transactions of 23-24 only. Okay. So what is written? Mansur purchased 5,000 shares of Orange Limited at 500 per share. Market value 800. So the shares has a market value 800 but I have paid only 500. So it is purchase of shares at low price. But because he is the dealer of shares, if he gets shares whether free or at low price, it will be tax free because it is a stock in trade for him. And as I told you, if you are into the business of a particular item, so that item you can always get free like a free sample or sometimes your supplier might provide at a lower price. So for a businessman getting something, either free or at low price is very normal. So that's why this will be exam. This is the point I told before the sum. So, see how will you write here? Wait. Give. 
परचेज ऑफ परचेज ऑफ शेयर एट लो प्राइस exam because what should i write shares are stock in trade stock in trade or you can write shares are stock in trade for this that's it can we write shares are and then yes you can write that because shares are stock in trade For Mansoor also you can write this. For Mansoor, yes. For Assessi or you can write the name also. That's okay. This was the main point for which. the question was done but see here i was solving along with you that's why you didn't find it tricky but you know many students look here look they don't read only this line properly by reading this line i came to know oh shares are stock in trade for him so i read along with you i pointed out that's why you realize if you would have randomly tried this question you would not have realized that oh this is a case of stock in trade so you have to read the question carefully okay so you can also highlight this thing dealer of shares so there only you can write means what you can write means shares are stock in trade write there for your understanding means shares are stock in trade stock is like a goods for him okay then See one last point of this chapter. See there is one different type of gift right now. I will discuss. This is something gift at the time of issue of shares. Now tell me, don't look at this right now. Tell me when a company issues shares. So what are the types of issue you have studied? Issue at par. issue at premium issue at discount nowadays issue at discount is not allowed okay so but you heard about that issue at par issue at discount issue at premium at par means shares are issued at face value premium is above the face value discount means below the face value okay okay now see if i want to issue shares when can i issue shares at premium only when my company is worthy when my company has a good valuation then i can issue my shares at premium imagine i am a very reputed very famous company my company has got great value in the market so such a reputed company will obviously issue the shares at par or premium premium means what you are charging extra amount and you deserve to charge extra if you are a valuable reputed company okay but see sometimes you know some companies issue the shares at premium but they don't deserve that much premium for example i have a company and my company share value comes to 15 rupees only face value is 10 but as per the balance sheet of my company 
the valuation of the shares comes to 15. What do you mean by valuation as per balance sheet? You know how to value shares of a company? Shares of a company are valued by following what approach? All the assets are taken at market value mm -hmm. minus all outside liabilities and divide by number of shares. Mm -hmm. You get a per share true value of the shares which we call it as intrinsic value, market value, something like that. This you will study more in accounts, okay? Mm -hmm. So imagine I am running a company and if you look at my balance sheet on the asset side, there are assets, liabilities side, there are liabilities and all assets I took at market value. Whatever value of the asset is in the market value, market value of all assets minus outside liabilities, divide by number of shares. And let's assume my share value comes to 15 per share. Face value is 10. But as per the balance sheets, uh, type of the asset which I am having, its market value, it comes to 15 per share. That means if I want to issue the shares, my issuer share should be at the most at 15 rupees. Face value is 10, but my shares market value, the worth is 15. So I have got, I deserve to issue my shares at 15. But now if I issue the shares at 16, then I am charging something more than I deserve. Charging means charging the issue price. My valuation is only 15 per share. And I am issuing these shares for 16. So I am getting 16 which is more than what I deserve. So what is the extra amount I am getting? 1 rupee. That 1 rupee becomes my gift. So whenever a company issues shares at a premium, what law says it should not be more than what you deserve. But they control the public companies. But there are many private companies. They are not controlled by SEBI. And private company as per its own wish, what it can do? It can issue the shares at any price. But the moment government realized that you are issuing a shares more than your worth, then the extra amount will be taxable. Taxable not for the shareholder. See, shareholder has to pay in the issue of shares. 1 rupees per share and I had issued say 1 lakh share. So 1 rupee into 1 lakh, that comes to 1 lakh rupees. And if I issue 10,000, so 1 rupee into 10,000 shares, but whether below 50 or above 50, doesn't matter here. Because this is a different kind of gift. And this is also governed by a different section. You know the section for this is what? 56.27b. This is a different section. See here I have written. Oh, I was wondering how did you know the section? It, it was written here. 56.27b. Okay. And that previous series of gift was normal gift, 56 to 10. See, this is a typical rule for private companies. Private companies are also known as closely held company. Closely held. For example, my coaching class Prime Vision, I am shareholder, my wife is shareholder. So, it is closely held by two people. So, when only two, three person becomes the owner of the company, it becomes... Close the L or you can casually say it as private company. And the rule is for these companies only. Huh? Because for public companies whose share prices come in stock market, if they go for a public issue, their issue prices are regulated by SEBI. They cannot charge anything to the shareholder in public issue. Okay, But a private company when it makes the issue, although the shares worth is only 15, but they are issuing it at 16. So that extra 1 rupee becomes taxable. Okay, do one thing. But see, this theory is applicable only when the issue is at premium. premium. Okay. okay, now answer if you understood. My shares value as per the balance sheet comes to 7 rupees only. Because in my balance sheet, the assets are useless. And there are so many liabilities. So, when I saw the balance sheet of Prime Vision, all asset minus liability, the net assets, divided by number of shares, it came to rupees 7 only. 7 rupees per share. Okay. And face value, let it be 10 only. Huh? I issued the shares at 9 rupees. 
Is it issue at premium? No. Although my market value is only seven, every company has got right to charge the face value. In corporate language, every company has got right to charge at least the face value. So in this example, you know, you heard that source company's valuation is only seven per share. Then he should not charge anything above seven. But see, up till face value, everyone has got right to charge as the issue price. Face value is my birthright. This every company says, okay. So even if the shares value is seven, I am issuing at ten. But ten is the face value only. So the rule doesn't apply for issue at par. The rule is only for yes. If you go for premium, premium means what you are charging extra. Then you do. Do you deserve that much? That you are charging extra? Then we see. Tell us what is your worth? What is your value per share? It's fifteen. How come you charge sixteen? Then the extra amount is taxable. In short, I wanted to highlight what you know. This rule is only for issue at premium. And the example which I gave, I issued at nine. It was a issue at discount. Okay, now answer. As per my balance sheet, my value per share comes to only three rupees because my company's balance sheet is very weak. It comes to three rupees per share, and I am issuing the shares at ten rupees. No problem because ten is the face value. See in all my example, ten is the face value. So till face value, everyone has got birth right to issue. When if when a company goes for premium, then you should hold the years premium. Do you deserve that much premium? Okay. Now answer this. My shares value as per the balance sheet comes to seven per share, and I am issuing the shares at thirteen per share. Then see you went for premium. Then full difference, seven and thirteen full. If you go for premium issue, then you are gone. And once gone means the difference between issue price and F market value per share means that value per share means that thirteen minus seven full difference will be tax. Okay. No, no, but see you should have issued at face value only. See in this example, instead of thirteen, if I would have issued at ten, then government says okay till face value you can issue, but the moment you go about ten, even if it is one, then eleven rupees issue price and your market value is only seven. The whole difference will be taxable. But if you would have kept the issue price at face value only, then no problem. Then let there be a difference between the value. Of your share is only seven, and the face value is ten. Let it be. You issued at par, but if you try to do a daring of issuing the shares at premium, then government will not leave you. Whole difference will come. See, actually, see, all varieties are covered in this. Look, let us try one by one. Look here, try this. See, there are. One, two, three, four, five cases. All varieties are covered. Okay. Best is what you know. First, you have to check where you find issue is at premium. Only when the issue is at premium, this section will apply. This section will apply. Issue at par, issue at discount. This section doesn't apply because issue at par, issue at discount. Government has got no objection at all. So see. Check this. This is issue at par. Issue at par means what you understand or not? Face value issue price same. Face value ten. Issue price ten. Issue at par. Ignore this thing. Don't even see the FMB. You will get confused. See, you do see the worth of the company when if it tries to go premium, because going for premium means what you are charging extra. Then we have a question. Do you deserve that much? Okay. So see, this was a typical case of issue at par. So section not applicable. Then second case, face value issued at aid, issue at discount. I repeat, nowadays issue at discount doesn't take place. Okay, 
बट एनी वेज प्राइवेट कंपनी एनीथिंग इज पॉसिबल ओके बट वॉट एवर इट इज नॉट इश्यू एट प्रीमियम सो दिस सेक्शन इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल ओके सो आई डू वन थिंग आई विल जस्ट कैंसल दिस ओनली Your section, what was section fifty six two seven B, not applicable. Okay, but now if you see, this is issue at premium, issue at premium, issue at premium. See, issue at premium is decided how by comparing the face value and the issue price. See here, in all three cases, the issue price is above the face value, and when you charge above face value, that is the case of premium, right? So now tell me what to do. Here I am charging a premium of two. So you have to ask: Do you deserve that much? What is your worth? So you have to see the fair market value. So what is the market value? Thirteen. That means my worth of share is thirteen per share. Till thirteen also, if I charge, I deserve it. Because my balance sheet has got valuable assets, all assets minus liability divided by number of equity share, it comes to thirteen. So up till thirteen, if I charge the issue price, it's my right. But I am charging only twelve, so it is well in my rights. So no tax. Okay. So now try next one. Next case, my valuation is eleven per share. Yes, my valuation is above face value, so I deserve to charge one rupee premium. But how much I am issuing at fifteen? So here I am charging issue price more than my worth. My worth is eleven, but I am charging fifteen. So what is the extra amount I am charging? Four. So four rupees per share taxable, and this four rupees is per share. Now you do see how many shares company issued. So that you can multiply and make it taxable, but here it will be taxable. Okay, see till now we are done here. See here what I return, issue at par not applicable, issue at discount not applicable. Here issue was at premium, but below FMV rupees five. Okay, my worth is seven, and I am daring to charge twelve. I repeat, this is only for closely. closely held company or a private company. Okay. So this was the last point. This point is not there in our question right now. Okay. but see in one topic of deem dividend there is one topic deem dividend there i have taken this point wait just to show that point i will show right now See this page number eighty-three. See, I am not solving the full question right now. Solving the full question is not possible because it requires the knowledge of deem dividend. And deem dividend, I said this, I will not take at this stage. I will take it at a later stage. Okay. Right now, anyways, I am winding up this chapter and moving to the next topic. But deem dividend is technically part of income from other source, but it is not a right time to teach the students at this stage okay once you become very comfortable with taxation then this will sound very simple okay it is not that it is tough but it is little awkward so only when you get used to the rhythm of taxation when you feel the tax is normal subject for us then we can touch this topic okay but right now why did i take this question you know i want you to try this point only just try this much
डिड यू रीड एम एन एस प्राइवेट लिमिटेड क्लोजली हेल्ड कंपनी इशू ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड शेयर एट वन ट्वेंटी फाइव पर शेयर फेस वैल्यू एटी एंड द मार्केट वैल्यू इज हंड्रेड एंड टेन सी मार्केट वैल्यू इन मीन वॉट यू नो सी फॉर प्राइवेट कंपनी यू डोंट कम टू नो स्टॉक मार्केट प्राइजेस स्टॉक मार्केट प्राइजेस आर देयर फॉर पब्लिक कंपनीज एंड दिस इज अ प्राइवेट कंपनी सो मार्केट वैल्यू डजेंट मीन द मार्केट प्राइज ऑफ स्टॉक एक्सचेंज it is as per the balance sheet of the company see private company's valuation how do you do with the help of the balance sheet by net assets method all assets minus liability at market value divided by number of shares this way they have given this 110 so tell me what are the three figures with you face value 80, 80. issue price 125 fair market value 110 See first, what you should check is it issued at par, discount or premium? Because if it is issued at par, ignore this section. This section is not applicable. Issued at discount also, this section is not applicable. First, you have to check that only. Okay. So is it issued at par or discount? No. This is issued at premium. Now, issued at premium means you have to ask: Do you deserve that much premium? How much you deserve that depends upon your market value. my market value permits that i can charge only 110 but what is the issue price i'm charging 125 so i deserve only 110 but i'm charging 125 so what is the extra amount 15 per share multiply by how many shares 12000 so this will be taxable this will go directly in the outer column okay But see, this full question it is not possible for us to solve. You know why? Because see, this point will come in the topic capital gains. Actually, this is a question of income from other source only. Okay, but this point will be taught in capital gains. This point, which are circled, it will be taught in capital gains. But the point pertains to income from other source, and this point. this first paragraph has a point which i will teach very late in the topic of deemed dividend in short although the question is of income from other sources but there are certain points which are not taught right now okay yes you can try this point if you want these points we have studied try see this is not possible because not taught to you by the way let me tell you this is exam question huh? exam question try third point nitin transferred a house property to his son raj without consideration see whenever you come across gift you know what should be your line of thinking first check i am dr lc if you are not in i am dr lc then you use your extra brains money movable property in movable property should be just be blah 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 okay but first you have to check out i am dr lc so this is a case from i am dr lc yes son means he has given property to his son and for a person his son means lineal descendant do you remember this lineal descendant i said yes, so son where is he in the family tree yeah see this is called lineal descendant descend how do you spell it like the descendant okay means my children grandchildren great grandchildren also on so in the question it is son so this is falling in the relatives definition so exam so this is exam try this also see full question it is not possible to solve but whatever you have learned up till now let us try that much try this tanmay gifted a refrigerator to his sister's daughter tanno on her marriage See, firstly, marriage gift is I am Doctor L C. Even if it was not marriage, even if doesn't fall in 
I am Dr. L.C. See, if something doesn't fall in I am Dr. L.C., what do you do? Tell me. If something doesn't fall in I am Dr. L.C., you become others. And then you check money, movable property. So your refrigerator, movable, but it is not falling in just we. Anyways, tax will not come. You didn't see it was refrigerator weight. Let me show. But see, firstly, looking at marriage only, you should say that's it, exam. Now, whether it is a refrigerator or a bungalow, marriage gift is always exam. Okay. But I'm just saying, for example, if it would not have been marriage, then wait, is it relative? Sister's daughter? My sister is my relative, not my sister's daughter. Sister is relative. Sister's daughter is not relative. So imagine if this was not marriage. And this is not relative also. Then it is not I am Dr. L.C. And not I am Dr. L.C. Then others. Then you will see it is refrigerator. So it is some movable item. But sir has taught us that it should be only just we. But the fridge is not just we. So not taxable. So that way also not taxable. But anyways, looking at marriage also it is not taxable. Okay. So, we are done with income from other sources as of now. Few points of income from other sources are left. But that will come at a later stage. I repeat again, don't match all this with study material. Study material, you will find everything given randomly. See, they don't have to teach you. They have to provide a material to study. So, they will provide whatever is given in the law as it is. But I have to teach you and I have to hold your hand in such a way that you should not fall down. I have to carefully and thoughtfully take you in such a way that you understand everything. Okay. If I try to expose all my knowledge, then you will get confused. So my job is not to do exhibition of my knowledge. I have to teach you. So I have to teach everything at the right time. Okay. So as of now, the topic of income from other sources is over. Okay. So we can start with a new topic. At least we can start today. Okay. The next chapter is, wait for next chapter, I'll start a fresh recording, wait. Okay, see our next topic is, look, income from salaries. Now see, when you call some income is a salary, you know, when there is a relationship of master and a servant, means there should be relationship of master and servant. Master means your boss. We call it as employer. And the one who is doing the job is a servant. We call him as employee. And once this relationship develops, that someone is your boss and you have to work as per, as per his instructions, orders and directions, you become a servant. And in such relation, it comes income from salary. See, no one likes to be servant of someone. But then for our survival, for our livelihood, we want some income. So for the sake of income, we, re we become ready to, sorry, we become ready to become a servant of someone. Okay. Otherwise, who likes to be servant of someone? Everyone wants to live the life the way they want. But just for the sake of income, sometimes you are ready to become a servant and such income is called income from salary. Okay. Now, this is the summary of the chapter. You know, in income from other source, what was my strategy? I gave you a keyword. D. W. Ramu Fakir Ji. One by one in each point, what I was explaining? Taxable exam. Taxable exam. Taxable exam. Same strategy in this chapter. See, this is a list of items which you have to study. You know what are these items? These are the things which you get when you work in some company and when you do job. Whenever you are doing some job, these are the incomes which you receive. Now, for each item of income, I will teach you whether it's taxable or exam. See, this chapter, although it is a new topic, but you will find it is same. Only the variety of income will be different. In the previous topic, you used to find dividend income, agriculture income. But now you will find only those items which arise in a job. 
सो टेल मी इन जॉब वॉट टाइप ऑफ इनकम कम्स सैलरी अलाउंसेस प्रोविडेंट फंड ग्रेचुटी पेंशन लीव सैलरी सी दीज आइटम सम यू हर्ड ऑफ सम यू नॉट हर्ड बट डोंट वरी आई विल एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी आइटम बट एटलीस्ट यू गेट अ फेयर आइडिया दैट यस दीज आर द आइटम्स विच यू गेट एज इनकम वेन यू आर डूइंग जॉब समवेर but whatever these are items of income and whenever we come across some income items our learning objective is taxable or exempt taxable or exempt and the strategy is same in this chapter also in the question they will give some income but obviously not now dw ramu fakir incomes they will give incomes arising in a job and in the answer you will prepare a statement and one by one you will check is it taxable write the amount exam dash taxable amount exam dash same strategy you will follow and here also if something is exam section 10 will come in short what i am trying to say you know don't feel this as a new topic it is just new items of income will come but the strategy of learning and solving the sum remains the same and which is what taxable or exam okay so can you tell me once i start with this point your what i will explain that what is basic salary whether it is taxable or exempt that i will explain okay then when i teach you leave salary what will i explain what is leave salary then whether it is taxable or exempt so for each item my method will be first make you understand the meaning and then taxable or exempt and you know once i finish all these points look 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 once i finish all this point the chapter is over but this is not a small topic it is a big topic see in dw ramu fakir ji there were many items here also number of items are that many only but for each item there will be a detailed discussion only thing is this chapter will become little lengthy but the method of understanding will be same as income from other source do you know the reason why i start my subject with income from other source because in income from other source you get the rhythm that yes in income tax there are different incomes for which we have to learn taxable exam taxable exam and in income from other source it is so simple that if something is taxable taxable exam then fully exam but in this chapter you know why it will become little tough if something is exam there will be some formula some amounts to be remembered see in the last topic hardly you have to remember some amount minor child 1500 post bar 3500 and in gift that 50000 and one 10 lakhs was there covid death but other than that there were no amounts to be remembered but in this chapter 